this video on surge, we're going to look at how to rationalize the denominators. So if you've got a fraction, and on the denominator, at the bottom line, you have got a third, that's obviously going to be an irrational term. So it's quite normal to try and rationalize the denominator. So in other words, making the denominator a rational term, so um, a whole number. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this. Now, depending on what's on the denominator, it would depend on which technique you're going to use. So for instance, if you had this, or if you had this, or if you had this, you were going to use three different little techniques. So, for this, what you do is use times, remember with a fraction, if you had something like uh, two thirds, you can get an equivalent fraction. For instance, if you times the top line by 10, you'd get 20, and if you times the bottom line by 10, you'd get 30. These are called equivalent fractions. Obviously, two thirds is the same as 20 over 30. So with a, uh, frac with a fraction with a third on the bottom line, we can times the top and the bottom by the same thing, and we get an equivalent fraction. So it's fine to do that. Now, remember the rule. If you have root a times root a, you get a. So, with this, we would want to get rid of the root 2 on the bottom line. So if I times the top and the bottom by root 2, I'm going to get 2 on the bottom line. I get rid of this third. I get rid of the square root sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to times both the top and the bottom by root 2. So the top line would become root 2. And the bottom line, well, root 2 times root 2 is 2. So it would become root 2 over 2. So 1 over two, uh, root 2 is the same as root 2 over 2. Um, if you were given an answer, you'd always want to give it as um, a fraction with a rational denominator. Okay, So a rational number, 2 on the bottom line, rather than a root 2. Okay, This one here, what you would do is, to get rid of this, if you look at the video on expanding brackets, look at my last example. Okay, um, What you do is you times top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom line, if you've got two terms like this. okay, So if you've got a whole number and uh, another third, um, or even if you had uh, two thirds or two terms of the bottom line with two thirds added together, you times it by the conjugate. So you times it by uh, the same thing as what's on the bottom line, but instead of a plus sign, a minus sign, or if it was a minus sign, the plus sign. So in this one, you times the top by three minus root two, and you times the bottom line by three minus root two. And I'm going to show you an example of that in a second. Okay. And this one here, you would times it by the conjugate of 3 minus root 2, which would be 3 plus root 2. So you times both the top and the bottom, oh, sorry, uh -huh. you times both the top and the bottom by whatever's on the bottom line, but with the opposite sign in the middle. Okay, uh, let's, let me show you some examples on that now. Okay, so here we've got 4 over 3 minus root 5. So what we'd want to do is we want to times top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So we have 3 minus root 5. So we're going to times both the top and the bottom by 3 plus root 5. 3 plus root 5. Okay, so the top line is quite straightforward. It's going to become 4 bracket 3 plus root 5. And then the bottom line, I'm just going to do that here, okay? So we would have 3 minus root 5 times 3 plus root 5. Look at my video on surge, expand in brackets to see uh, more practice on this. So we're going to just expand it. So 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times root 5 would be plus 3 root 5. Minus root 5 times 3 would be minus 3 root 5. And finally... Minus root 5 times root 5. Remember, root 5 times root 5 is 5, and negative times a positive is a negative, so minus 5. And then you simplify this. Uh, 3 root 5 take away 3 root 5 is 0. 9 take away 5 is 4. So we're going to be left with, then the bottom line is 4. So notice if you times this by its conjugate, you get a nice integer there. So you're going to have divided by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. It's meant to be a 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, so you're just left with 3 plus root 5. That's fantastic. So we have simplified this to just 3 plus root 5. This time we're going to rationalize the denominator of 1 over root 5 plus root 3. So again, we want to get rid of the two terms on the bottom line that have got uh, square root signs. So in other words, the two thirds, we want to rationalize this. So we're going to times top and bottom by the conjugate, which would be root 5 minus root 3. Root 5 minus root 3. Okay, the top line's easy. It's just going to be, well, 1 times root 5 minus root 3 is going to be root 5 minus root 3. And let's just do the bottom line. So let's uh, write these out in brackets and expand. So we're going to have root 5 plus root 3 times root 5 minus root 3. So let's expand. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. 
uh, root 5 times minus root 3, well, root 5 times root 3 is uh, root 15, minus root 15. Root 3 times root 5 would be plus root 15. Notice these add together to give you 0. And finally, uh, root 3 times minus root 3, well, root 3 times root 3 is 3, positive times negative, negative, so minus root uh, 3. So these become 0, 5 to the square 3 is 2, so you're going to get 2. The bottom line just becomes 2. Two. And that's it, we have rationalised the denominator, we've got a nice integer on the bottom line, and the top line is obviously your thirds, so that's fine.